Hello and uh, welcome to the second lecture on MIFS instructions. So in this lecture we will continue our discussions on uh, MIFS instructions and discuss few additional uh, instructions. So in the last lecture we stopped at uh, this particular example. Uh, I didn't mention about few subtle points. I left it uh, for you guys to find it out. So one thing that I should mention is uh, in this last example, our goal was to uh, store a 32-bit constant into a 32-bit register using this uh, instructions that operate on immediate or constant values, but that take only 16-bit values. So in, in the first instruction, the load uh, upper immediate. So this instruction actually operate on the upper bits. So that's why uh, the values that we are actually storing is actually getting stored in the upper 16 bits uh, whereas the instructions like or immediate or maybe odd immediate they operate on the lower 16 bits so so that that's why the combination of these two instructions uh, help you to uh, load a 32 bit constant yeah so th this is just a small uh, subtle point so in today's lecture, we will discuss about memory instructions. So instructions that operate on variables or operands which are present in memory. Okay. So this, this may sound a bit heavy. So before going into memory, uh, let's get into something called the stored program concept uh, or the von Neumann concept. So before 1944-45, uh, memory used to store only the data the data that you need for your program so for example if you are running your matrix multiplication and uh, you are storing the data in the form of array so the memory will store uh, the array with uh, the elements let's say the integers or floating point numbers uh, post 1944 von neumann uh, came up with this uh, notion of instructions also getting stored in memory which means uh, the program that you have written when it gets compiled and then finally it, it creates the update code that the binary itself is now getting stored in memory. So, so far we, we have been assuming memory stores the data, but from now on we should remember that memory stores both data and instructions. So at a top level 10,000 feet view, what's the what 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 is memory right so in this figure i am showing a uh, uh, memory of capacity let's say 4 gigabyte uh, and what we would uh, use for the rest of the lecture is something called uh, a word and word is typically of 4 bytes it can be uh, more than 4 bytes or less than 4 bytes also but uh, for MIFS architecture, we'll assume uh, one word is four bytes. So with, with this uh, introduction, what I want you guys to understand is the memory is nothing but collection of words. It's like word zero, word one, right? Till that's a word N minus one. So th this is the entire 4GB capacity. And the processor sends request through the bus that we have discussed in the previous lecture and uh, the DRAM responds with the data. Okay. So uh, to understand the entire process of stored program uh, or von Neumann concept, we need to understand one more uh, subtle uh, concept, which is the role of the program counter. The program counter is nothing but a register. So we have discussed about basic registers for uh, performing any arithmetic operation or any other operations. But this is a special register called program counter. It's also known as uh, instruction pointer or IP. Okay. So this is a register that stores the address of the instruction. Okay. So uh, remember register is a container. So I have this register called, uh, let's say, PC and let's say it stores some address XYG. 
this means the address xyg stores the instruction that uh, the processor will get it from memory then execute it and while executing it will uh, demand for the data right so if you assume a 32 bit processor and then the mips isa or mips 32 bit uh, isa then uh, this pc will be of uh, 32 bit it's a register of 32 bit and let's assume uh, that even the address is of 32 bit okay so the details we can uh, discuss later in the course but to make things simple let's assume we are dealing with 32 bit isa and 32 bit processor so uh, the program counters will be uh, uh, jumping uh, plus four all the time which means the processor sends pc to memory to get the first instruction since the pc uh, stores the address and address is of uh, with 32 bit which is four bytes the concept of word that we have discussed in the previous lecture so now the processor will send pc plus four to memory and so on so this is uh, like a sequential order uh, through which the processor will demand for instructions from the memory so once the processor knows uh, this is where my program starts so let's say my program starts from p in the memory or dram then it will start sending instructions like uh, p p plus 4 p plus 8 p plus 12 like that so these are the contents of uh, program counters the program counter will get incremented after every instructions um, that gets executed okay so we'll get a better picture in uh, next few lectures but for the time being uh, get the concept of uh, stored program and uh, the role of a program counter how does it help the processor to get the instructions from the memory so we discussed about uh, this particular slide uh, in lecture zero and there we talked about this five components uh, in today's lecture we are expanding this particular figure with additional information so now as we have discussed memory can store both instructions and data and uh, your registers and alu they are they are they are part of the processor but one of the key register is the program counter that gives you the address from which the processor will get the instruction once the processor gets the instruction for let's say performing an alu operation it will demand for data by sending an address again and the memory will respond with the data and then the processor will perform the alu operation as simple as that okay so this is step one you uh, get the instruction from memory to processor then this is step two you actually uh, send the address for the data and then this is step three which is the actual data so you can also talk about something called a step zero which is nothing but the pc itself right the pc the content of the pc whatever it has and uh, based on that you send a request to the memory right so uh, the example that i have shown or the steps that i have shown i have assumed that uh, the address is already sent to memory for getting the instruction okay so this is a simple example let's assume that we have a program that has only three instructions let's say pcx pcy and pcz are the program counters uh, that are pointing to this three instructions so you can assume uh, in the dram sorry there will be a uh, pcx pcy pcz right so what i meant by this is pcx will let's say map to an address x pcy to address y and pcj to address z so in the memory uh, somewhere we have x y and z so these are the addresses uh, from which the processor is uh, demanding the instructions right so and if you look at the sequential order here so we are dealing with three different instructions one is a load which is a memory instruction that we will discuss in a minute then an arithmetic instruction and then the load upper immediate that we have discussed in the previous lecture 
so the relationship between these pieces are uh, they are uh, going through a sequential order with an increment of four why four because you are dealing with a 32 bit isa and uh, so in one go uh, the pc uh, actually spans across uh, four bytes okay so with that uh, the obvious question that can come to your mind is why memory and why not registers because in the last lecture we discussed about uh, registers registers are there uh, sitting inside the processor with almost no latency but registers are limited and if you add more and more registers the access time will be higher when i say access time i meant the time it takes to read the variables or the operands from the registers will be higher we'll go through that later uh, when we look into register file and other things uh, sometime after a few weeks uh, but for the time being let's focus on the data part because that's the focus of this lecture how to get the data from the memory we have assumed that we know how to get the instruction from the memory into the processor so that processor will execute but uh, the next few slides will show how to access data so uh, in this slide i am showing two instructions one is called load word another is called store word so the notion of load is you are loading something from the memory into the processor core and the notion of store is you are writing back something into the memory okay so if you look at the first instruction what it does is it takes the register a0 find out its content and then it add one to that particular content and then it goes to memory so for that particular address which is dollar a0 plus one let's assume dollar a0 is x so x plus one so the processor will send a load request to address x plus one and then the memory will respond with the data for that particular address okay so now t0 uh, which is a register let's assume it's a temporary register it stores the data which is present in address dollar a0 plus one right similarly if i want to go for the store operation if i want to write something into the memory then you have to use the store word instruction and what it does is it takes the value from the register let's say t0 into this particular address right so now it's going back into the memory it's taking the content of t0 let's say t0 is 10 then the 10 will go to a particular location here let's say that location is dollar a0 plus one and it will write 10 there okay so these are the two uh, primitive instructions uh, that we will uh, deal with whenever we are dealing with memory loads and stores so this is a more detailed example uh, for a load from the memory so as, as i have explained in the previous slide uh, you can assume that the memory is a sequence of addresses or sequence of bytes or sequence of words and each address stores some data now with the load word you are actually loading a particular data which is present in a particular address right remember the load immediate instructions that we have discussed in the previous lecture it's not a load from memory because immediate deals with constant right uh, in that case you are not accessing memory or you are not sending an address to memory to get the data okay so a similar example the moment it becomes store you are saying that you you store the content of uh, one of the registers into a particular address and uh, that address will now contain the updated data so if we bring both instructions and data uh, into uh, account then the first step is we are actually sending a request to memory 
so that we'll get the instruction. So this is what it is. So processor reads the register PC and it finds that uh, it has to get the instruction PCX, right? It goes to memory, it uh, fetches that instruction, okay? And once it fetches the instruction, uh, it sees that it needs data from memory. So this is what it is. And we need to go to this particular address to get the data, right? So this is the second fetch that we are talking about. The first fetch is actually for instruction. The second fetch is for the data. Right. And again, for the next instruction, it will uh, go to memory, fetch that particular instruction. But remember, this instruction is a non memory instruction. So for data, it's already there in registers. There is no need to go to memory to get the data. So there is only one fetch for this particular instruction to just uh, get the instruction from uh, the memory into the processor okay so with that i will stop and in the next lecture we will discuss some more miss instructions